OK, last week, last week, no demos, but we talked about uh, the PR. That is a bit in bootstrap and also should refactor it so we can reuse the bootstrap files from the admin on the front end if we can. Still the uh, Cache of identities, we looked at a uh, nice PR and how you can cache the site settings. And many other things, all the, the, the issue that Jean Fleury was working on to improve memory leaks, well, to fix memory leaks that were reported, that he tracked down and fixed, let's see, today. And six, three, we have the modes. I don't have a demo, but I want to make an announcement about that bootstrap uh, upgrade. And then I'm speaking. Uh, bootstrap announcement. Mike is shipping bootstrap six. Oh, let's see the status. So, then do triage on Thursday because my meeting went on most of the triage meeting, so I didn't join. Then, that should one. Nothing, all should call. Uh, 26 minus 7, 19, 19 here. Maybe we saw that. And then this one, Tony updating Jint, Ishan updating need for number. Um, I'm sure the MK Docs people are, play, are playing with Antoine because Antoine was updating. Antoine, I don't believe he decided to update to 940, knowing that 942 was there. So I will just assume that these people, they just shift three versions in, in four days. Oh, in four days, not the same day. Okay, just. Activity here, but it's in this folder. It's not they are very active. Monaco update, Monaco update. I oh, we are using Monaco. I mean, I tweeted that um, the dev from Liquid JS, the Liquid implementation of uh, in in JavaScript, uh, made a good mural support for Liquid. But we use Monaco. We don't use good mural. Bootstrap 532. What is that today? This morning? Yep. That's, that's done? We'll, yep. We'll make the announcement, you know, and oh, yeah. explain what we need to do. Oh, yeah. it's changing. Fix icon picker and clean up SAS thing. So, yeah, and now I believe we'll find some issues. This will get in the good state. Actually, set HTML classes to make the scripts work again. Are these bootstrap things? No, these are ours. We used okay. to use them, but then at some point when we upgrade to Bootstrap 5, we uh, removed them. And uh, so because we didn't know what they were, or well, it was a mistake. Yeah. Or... yeah. That's why we should have comments there, Mike. Right. 
these classy values for split whatever you can understand. So what was broken? Content type sitemap source. Okay, the steps for content type sitemaps. Okay. You merge this in ISO, ISO your PR. Um, and you merge this. I was like, it looks fine. Where did you find this implementation? Uh, somewhere, somewhere on the web. But I tested it and it works great. It's the same thing. The problem with the crypto random UID, it only works if you're using HTTPS connection. And if you're not, then it's not even going to be defined. So that's where we just use that to generate those ID used for the media files. Is it something you mentioned during the meeting? This one? When did you look at it? Or did I look at it out of the meeting? Um, I don't know if we, I mean, there's an issue for it. There's yeah, a couple of issues around it, but so, I just don't know if. Yeah. So let, let's explain that quickly. It's so for me, I didn't know about that. Uh, F12, F12 works. So, oh, I think HTTP on me website. And here, yeah, this one, there, there is the one, HTTP forever, okay. So this website, HTTP forever, is not, not using HTTPS, okay? So that's very funny. Um, so if you type something like this, undefined. So crypto.random.uid is undefined. If you go on the website, but they have also HTTPS, right? or they don't. So if you go on Microsoft.com, not this one, Microsoft.com. Uh, this is HTTPS. Let's try. I'm sorry. It's quite clear. Yeah. No, that's not what I want to do. Uh, that's a function you have to uh, yeah that's add okay those yeah just so i i don't think you, i don't even need parameters right okay, so that works so this works this doesn't work so undefined so obviously if i call it undefined boom that would be fine so this function random id on crypto object is Undefined, or well, is not available if you are in, in a non-secure environment. HTTP. Correction. Can... Crypto exists, but the random UID doesn't exist. I believe that's what exactly what I said. But oh, I, I, okay. I agree. I, I... But, but 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 maybe I don't hear myself, and you, so we'll check the recording. But that's what I thought I said. So I agree with you. Good job. Uh, thank you for correcting me if I did the wrong thing. And are there other ones like this, you know? I am not aware of other ones, but there could be. And I assume they want to prevent that in case you could leak some UID because you use that on the client and send it on the server, it could be intercepted. So it would be a, a, a wrong sense of security. So they say, let's just generate them when we know that there is a secure connection with a server in case they use that to send to the server. And it has to be secret. So yeah, it doesn't work. And and so in the media file management, we use that. We use that and a user said there is an error or just could tell us this thing doesn't work because when they run on Docker, the default half of our Docker deployment is too much use HTTPS. So this one will fail with the default Docker um, thing. Question being, imagine you have a, a proxy that does the HTTPS um, uh, termination. And you run your web server non HTTPS between your proxy and your actual server. With the, yeah, the client would, would be fine because the client will connect still to an HTTPS uh, endpoint, so it will work and then so it can work if you serve HTTP, it's just that the client itself needs to be beyond HTTPS. 
because you so you see like that we might want to ship um a 171 patch version that would be fine but yeah who, who ships a website that is not a cps today Well, I have a preview environment, like a staging environment, that I don't use yeah. HTTPS okay. because I, you know, I don't want to maintain SSL certificate on something that I just delete whenever I want to. Not a good idea, but I do it. I'm sure others do something else. Okay. Well, we can do that. Sad. Can we just ship a new Docker image? Maybe we could try to just ship a no, we can't just ship a new Docker image because it's based on the packages also. Yeah, so if we if we decide to push a new release, we cannot take that bootstrap change. Oh, we can just cherry pick this one. I will just cherry pick this this oh, okay. patch. Just to patch okay. one seven one, right? Oh like Got it. no risk. Yeah, yeah, because I don't want, yeah, because that's a huge change. I don't want to no, send it okay. to production yeah. right now. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah, so let's try that. Ideally, we create a PR that targets 170 branch. Sorry, release 170. 1.7. Yep. Yeah. Uh, create a PR, we review it, we accept it, so it will be merged into the release 170. Then um, this branch can update all the versions to 171. Well, there is one thing to update 171. And um, if we create a new release tag for release 17 branch and we call it 171, then it will ship a new version 171 out of three. We can do that on Thursday together. To you. I, I won't be here Thursday or Tuesday okay. next week because I believe it's interesting time. to do. Yeah, and, and I agree. And I actually was going to ask you, how would you cherry pick? Um, oh, so if you use a tool like this, it's very easy. So I will show you. I won't commit, but I will show you how, how you will do that. So whenever you have a tool like this, you need to check out the, the branch you want to update to be sure that you're not updating anywhere. So here I'm doing checkout with 1.7. So my local uh, branch is release one seven. Okay. Now, I oh, am I on the latest one? No, I'm not, I'm not on the latest one. This is my local one. This is the one I want. To check out. Why does it go back there? It is that. Oh, because we merged in the meantime. I had to, what is that? I don't know how to use. I'm confused. So this is our main, and my local main points to the same one. Okay. Now, I can delete this one. My local. No, I don't want to delete <laughs> origin. Just mine, which is weird. Oh, I know what I will do. Yeah. Check out this one. Reset. Reset this one to there. Um, so I'm saying no, my branch goes to the same address. Okay, so I check out release one seven, and now I will pick your change. Which is one, okay, right click, and I say cherry pick. And by doing that, I commit the changes, cherry pick. Okay, oh, there is a conflict with the files. So we need to regenerate everything, but. The nice thing is this tool is that it shows you the command line to type if you want. I don't need to, I don't even need to look at it, but if you want to know what's happening behind the scene, 
indeed, this is what is doing indeed, cherry pick and the commit hash that you want to copy to your current branch. Right now there are conflicts because something. Yeah, change the file, change into, into after after that. Yeah, in main it changed with bootstrap and, release. And with these two, we can say, okay, how to fix that. And this, so this one, for instance, you can say, I need to show me the, the conflicts here. And we can decide what's the code to put there. Or we can decide just pick this version of the file or this version of the file and then regenerate everything. Yeah, so we'll because, regenerate everything. Yeah, so here in this case, this is the uh, good script. Yeah, this is the one that is generated, right? So yeah, you just mean, take any of that, regenerate. Yeah, doesn't matter what. Yeah. So I could, I yeah, could pick this one. Yep. Same thing. Then regenerate and then commit the changes. And that will be the new. I commit. would take one more to the UI, the model, the model one type number we talked about releasing or. Uh, just because we're releasing something, we'll, we need, might as well fix the other issue, which is oh, uh, yeah. the the model. Uh, which commit? I'm looking at your oh, screen. Try. Yeah, but we said we don't want to take it. Or is it now safe because people need it? Is it is safe. It is safe. But like I said, since we're releasing 1.7, might as well take it too. It's, it's a risky. It's a risky uh, um, line of thoughts to say. Or let's take all the fixes we need. Because no, no, I would say take that because you know, like if you click on features, it, it's it, if you click on features, you will see a list of not features, but like if you're on the workflow and you're trying to add something to the workflow, you will see how your model shows up under the header or under the nav bar. So I, I think it's I since we are releasing, might as well take it. And also, you mean it's also updating the. The script file, the yeah, the static assets file. It's a CSS term, right? What do you mean? Yeah, but I just show you what to do, so I hope someone will create a PR on this way. Okay. Okay. User option is just to update the files directly, but it's, it's nice to be able to do a, a cherry pick to know how to do that. Then yeah, yeah and absolutely. then create the PR. So I won't do yeah. that. I will just do here. Uh, stage and discard checkfix. So that's how I'll do the things here in these two. And if you use Git extensions, it's exactly the same way it works. Right click, check out, right click, cherry pick what you want. So if you don't use fork, which you have to pay for, uh, you can use Git extensions. Suggestion. Um, okay, and now I can go back on my that. Uh, then where were we? Here, way back. So yeah, I thought that this was interesting. I had no idea we have a JavaScript things that are new variable in HTTPS. Now we know. Update HTML. Some sanitizer and Microsoft Identity Web 2.14.0. So is it the one? I'm always confused with this identity. Things. No, that's not a new one. Okay, just an update. Okay. Good. Uh, I think that's it. And topics, like you said, bootstrap announcement. Yeah, so like we saw earlier <clears throat> today, Antoine merged uh, bootstrap uh, upgrade. So this one was a major upgrade. Uh, a ma by major upgrade is because there was a lot of cleanup done uh, in the past when we upgraded uh, from Bootstrap 4 to Bootstrap 5, there was a lot of uh, patches done in order to just get it to a working stage. So with Bootstrap 5.3, we took the admin theme and 
reinvent most of the assets in order to make it compliant with Bootstrap for many reasons. One of them being, being easier to maintain because we don't have a lot of overrides. So we try to uh, code along instead of going against Bootstrap. Uh, it, it's much easier to maintain it. If tomorrow they release 5 point, you know, 3 point whatever, we can easily update it. Um, so there was a lot of changes that was done because with Bootstrap 5.3, there is support for themes. So there is a th support for dark theme, there's support for light theme, and also you can add on any other theme that you might want. Um, so if you want a blue theme, a red theme, you can easily add that with Bootstrap. I wouldn't say easily, but you can achieve that with uh, Bootstrap 5.3. So previously, we used to have our own dark mode and default theme. So those now are supported by Bootstrap. So for that reason, one of the uh, breaking changes that we did, we no longer call theme dark theme. It is now called dark, and we call one light. And by default, we use auto. Uh, what auto does, it allows you to, so if you're on your cell phone, and you're utilizing a dark theme in your iOS, you log into the website, will automatically honor your preferences, uh, which is automatic. So if you're on a dark mode, the website will load dark by default. And if you're on light, it'll automatically lo load in the light. Um, so that's uh, one of the uh, main breaking changes uh, that we had uh, done. But also in process, we. Again, we cleaned up a lot of the resources. So one of the other benefit that we also introduced was separating Bootstrap from the admin assets. So before the admin CS or CSS used to include Bootstrap within it. And also the admin.js used to also include Bootstrap within it. So we compiled them together and we shipped them that way. So with the new layout, we actually separated the two. So the admin.css or the admin.js, they're much lighter files, but they are loaded after we load Bootstrap. So again, the benefit of that is that now, if you're utilizing the CDN to load Bootstrap, you know you can still utilize the CDN if it's already preloaded in your environment, you no longer need to reload it. So it just pull it from your cache. So it kind of gives you a, a perform performance boost. And also um, our code is completely independent of um, uh, of Bootstrap. Uh, sh should I share my screen and show the new layout want. really quick? Okay. I just want people because uh, one of the things that we want people to report as quick as possible, any issues that you know, that we might notice. Uh, I so a, I have a comment about the CDN thing. Uh, maybe we mentioned that earlier. Do you know that the CDN cache is per domain? So even if you have, if you use Bootstrap from a CDN, if you, the same CDN, if two websites use the same CDN, the same Bootstrap, you will still have to download it again on the, the other side because they, they isolate every cache for each domain. That's strange. That's a new behavior on the browsers in Spastor recently, I think, and uh, that yeah. makes the CDN kind of less useful. Yeah, that so is strange. In, in our case, if use a CDN, then yes, it's useful if you go to the admin and then to the back end, to the front end, and do the same version of the front end and then the admin, you will not load two different resources, but it's just in this case. That's the only thing that you prevent by reusing yeah. the same file. That, that makes sense, but also you could be utilizing the bootstrap version under your front end, the same as the back end. Now you're still using one uh, cache. Yeah, that's what right. I'm saying. That's the only yeah. that's the only way that you can leverage uh, the cache. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. So then okay. the only so the only benefit of CDNs right now is uh, geographic 
distribution, that's it? Well, yeah, that's weird, <laughs> right? Because once you have your cash, then you don't need a CDN. So yeah, it's like, yeah, you, you, you are, actually, yeah, as you said, either geographic for latency, but also that it's taking the, 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 the bandwidth out of your website, but on the CDN side, that's the only advantage. It's no more like reuse the assets across websites to, to use the cache. No, you still have to do it if you go on a different website. Yeah, that's just strange. Yeah. Security. Okay, they, good they to know though. Security issues on our ones. Yeah, good to know. Thanks for sharing. Okay, so back here. So here's our admin theme. So our admin theme, now there is a folder. Well, we still have the folder called assets, but inside of it, there's a folder called SAS. And inside SAS, there's really one file. That's the main file where we load everything. So in, in here, we have variables. Uh, we import some main stuff like helpers, layout, overrides, like bootstrap overrides. And then we also import any components after. And at the very end here, we can include any themes. As you can see, we're including two themes, the light and the dark. And it's just an easy way to spot or kind of look at this and understand what's happening uh, without having to look. So if you need to add new theme, uh, you can include something here like light or red, right? So you can include your red and then you can create a folder here called red and you can define your, your red. So if you look at the dark, there's a file called index here where we say we utilize this bootstrap uh, function to create a scope for our dark theme. And as you can see here, we're saying only when it's dark, we want to do these overrides and make these changes. Um, so you can do the same thing for red. Like if you have a red theme, you would do something like, you know, red. And now you have a red theme that matches the dark theme. OK. Um, so that is uh, one uh, one thing that we reorganized a lot of that stuff in here. Uh, keeping it. Try to keep it simple by separating. So there was more files added uh, just to kind to keep things again separated for easier maintenance. Um, but the the good thing is that we removed a lot of the so here's bootstrap. So we're utilizing bootstrap helpers in here without including bootstrap. So we're taking on bootstrap breakpoints. We're creating um, some um, some helpers here. Uh, you know, there is a layout. This is uh, all the changes that we use for you for layout. The file I think was like over 100 lines of code. Now it's down to 46 because a lot of cleanup was done and simplifying. Um, another thing you'll notice that we're utilizing variables instead of hard coding numbers in here. And the good thing about this is that if we have any other module that really need that value instead of hard coding it, now you can actually grab the variable and just utilize a variable. Uh, you can have a fallback, but the good thing about this is that you don't really have to hard code anything. So if we ever need to change the margin of the left of the content for admin, we can go to our variables here and just go ahead and change the variables right in here. Um, so this right here, this variables file, uh, we are including uh, or not including, we're importing the bootstrap functions and bootstrap variables just so we can create our own uh, variables. As you can see here, the variables start with OC, Orchard Core, dash something. Um, again, this is just to make it much more easier to maintain and also used in other components. Like for example, our media, uh, I think needs to know, or or I forgot, there's other components like uh, the editors, right? When the editor's in full screen, they somehow need, it needs to show over everything, like including the admin, the nav bar, but it has to be under the mo the model in order for it to uh, to work properly. So we created a variable here and anyone that needs, uh, an, any editor that needs a full screen, you can utilize this awesome variable, and uh, and and that's that makes a lot of uh, it, it makes things a lot easier um, on us down the line. 
Uh, there is also the component files. As you can see, the components are really small files, but they do one thing. So, uh, you know, here's the Monaco here. You can go in here and you'll see how we override it to make it look nice. And as you can see, we no longer hard code colors. We, we utilize a variable. So if that variable changed, so if someone added uh, a red color, we'll automatically honor that red color, uh, the, uh, the, the red theme without having to hard code uh, anything. Uh, so all these variables you will notice that we no longer using or hard coding any colors whatsoever. Uh, even, uh, you know, things like, um, like radius, right? Even the radius is a variable. So if you decide to change the radius value, it will change throughout. If you wanna change the color, again, it changes. So, so that's one of the, the kind of cool things, I, we spent a lot of time trying to accomplish this because it'll make it much easier for us. So really the announcement today is that Bootstrap 5.3.2 is now in, uh, merged into the admin. And we obviously want as much testing of this done, uh, including the dark theme and the light theme because there was a lot of changes. Um, to the, the styles to make it work. Obviously, we did extensive testing on our end to try to make it as flawless as possible, but most likely we missed a thing or two here that needs uh, improvement. So if you notice any issue, obviously report an issue right away. Uh, you can ping me or ping Antoine uh, and we'll be able to address it as soon as uh, we get those uh, issue coming up. Uh, that's it. Thank you. I think that we have it on record because people will be able to understand what's happening and how to fix it. Right. Um, and good job. I that's a lot of files that have been shared. I will share again my screen if I can find teams, various teams. Various yeah, I was looking at all the files here. That's a lot of changes. Good, good job. Okay, thanks. Um, this one. The news of the peaks. So great. Again, the triage, were there any big issues that were reported for once again? Uh, uh, Sets to get clean and then broken self files. What you know that that yeah. Kubernetes, you see that issue number five, the Kubernetes. That's actually a very interesting uh, uh, problem that we have. And John Theory mentioned that you at some point were not uh, with, so the summarization what issue. What is it? Let me summarize the issue really quick. Oh. You didn't, you didn't. I just want, <laughs> I want to understand more about your feedback. So the issue here is that you have a cluster, okay? You have a bunch of nodes of Orchard Core running, not side by side. Now, if we do on one node, we decide we want to rebuild it, re restart it because a setting have changed or something, right? Now, if we reload it, all the instances really should be reloaded at the same time. Otherwise, the 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 node that hasn't been loaded yet will have a wrong behavior. For right. example, I'm on at node A, I submit a post request. My post request reloaded the version. Okay. Now your second request is handled by another server. Like if you click on a third request, so now you're handled by another node, and the other node hasn't yet been restarted. And you're like, well, I just changed this, and it looks like it didn't save my changes. Right. So for it to really work in Orchard Core environment, if you have 
an, uh, a request that restarts or reloads uh, the site or the, the container, the same request should apply in all the nodes, right? Unless, Unless. you know, you want to guarantee that that user always utilizing the same node over and over and over by utilizing like ARR cookie that always ensures that you're on that same node over and over and over, right? Yep. But there's going to be some sort of delay, meanwhile, until the other nodes realize that, oh, I need to also restart, right? So And, and, you're, and you're seeing my screen, right? Yeah, yeah, that that's a okay. that's a that's called the ARR affinity cookie. Well, so that, that a, well, that's called session affinity in Azure App Service. This is the AIR ARR cookie. AR, correct. Yes, yes. So, but the 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 question is, why can't we have all nodes in Orchard Court subscribe to a service? So as soon as one node report a reboot, all of them get a push request to reboot at the same time. And now all the environments will always be as sync. Now, John Theory down below mentioned that one time you were uh, not, uh, you are against that approach for some reason. And my, what I'm trying to understand here is that why? Because, I mean, obviously, you might have a very valid reason. I just want to know why. Why can't we have a subscription event for all the nodes and then send the signal the minute a, a reboot is needed and then we'll reboot all the nodes because we kind of have to and rebuild everything? You don't have to. Like if you use session affinity, why would you need to reboot everything? Because you want the new users to uh, to get the new behavior, and but they will do right eventually because we do have this message bus and we do, and so the the server on the next request, the other pods on the next request, they will restart, won't they? Uh, no. Not necessarily, and that's what the problem is. He's saying that, you know, in the next request, I'm still seeing the old behavior, the old settings. Wait, wait, wait. So, so but, there's a delay. Yeah, okay. There is a delay, sure, that's what I'm saying. Um, I mean, eventually, they will all restart. They are all getting the, the notification that it needs to be restarted. And it will restart. They will all restart eventually, right? Eventually, yep. Yeah, it's not real time. They are not restarting all at the same time, right? Note that even if you wanted them to restart at the same time, you will not be able to ensure that they are restarting at the same time. Like, you can't say you have three machines. One machine says, oh, we need to restart. Let's not accept any new request. And then, okay, we agree that we didn't accept any requests. We are all waiting. Okay, now let's all restart. That would have to be the case because if you don't do that, you send the request to all the other machines to say restart, but they are already processing new requests. Like, it's not real time. You can't have that unless you really wait for everyone to block the world and not serve anything. So, and that's a weird state to not serve anything while everyone is restarting. That's weird. So, what I'm saying but is it's also need... but it's also weird for the current user to yeah. be able to, you know, like yeah. get a so, wrong behavior, right? They share affinity. That's why. But but that's them. not a great solution either. If you have a busy environment, you know, now forcing. Yeah. So what's the session affinity? Is that it, once you're assigned to a node, you're going to always be stuck to that node mm -hmm. unless that node is is dead, right? And then you'll yep. put uh, it'll put you a new one. But it's not good because now you could potentially have more, a lot more traffic on one node than so other nodes because of that. A, that is a wrong argument because if you restart everything, then you have a lot of traffic on nothing and nobody is served. So what's the best approach? That some people are served or nobody is served? 
like to have a node that is highly requested or that nobody's request can't request anything like the site is down for five seconds uh, and and i think that's the approach even that app service is using when you scale out so when you update like even when you don't scale out uh, when you send an update from, yeah I and mean, it's a kind of different but the way that they work like imagine they have to patch windows okay, they will restart your app service and you have a single instance what they do is that they start in the background another machine with the patched thing that they know you need to apply like a new setting and when it's up they redirect all the traffic to your instance that is currently working that the new instance that has been restarted and then they stop your actual instance to to update it again and that's the idea i think that uh, we do today is like yeah when you click restart it restarts the the node where you are at it sends notification so that the other ones know that they have to restart but they, are, they don't have to all be synchronized it can be one at a time There might be issues with that, though I, I don't disagree, but well, yes and no. Are there issues? Yeah, there are database migration issues, even though when you do things that imply that address migration, you need to have an app that handles the old and the new uh, database. Yeah, well, whenever yeah. whenever we uh, load the migrations, usually we make a, a lock. So one instance is serving. OK, in this case, that's fine. Yeah, because uh, it's only one service, so we we don't apply. So the migration is only applied on one node. Okay, so when you say that, for instance, we upgrade the app itself, then it's, we are restarting everything. So that's fine. But you are well because if you change. Yeah, no, if you okay. change, like if you uh, let's say enable the new feature, or like you you made yeah. a change to the site settings, now that re that reloads the site, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so okay. Yeah, unless you come back, ensure that you're back to that same node, you're going to have some odd behavior because you're like, I just updated the settings, but the settings are showing the old value. And if you do like five, six refreshes quick, you know, you could potentially get back to that same node that has the right value, you know, until everything, until like all of them catch on that, hey, a reboot was done and now they all have the correct value. Okay, what, so what's the issue about that identification? I mean, like I said, the issue is that unless That's you the have issue you a session, yeah. Yeah, so I, the idea was to introduce some sort of signal, like I, that which we already have, like I message bus or something like that, or I message something. We have a service that we can distribute a signal. Right, so whenever we boot the app, we we okay. uh, subscribe to it, and then once a signal, you yeah, know, so is initiated, it, we reload right away instead of having to wait. So the issue here is notice that the response shows incorrect state. Like if a feature is enabled, the backend state it shows enabled instead of disabled. So this is because they are hitting the other uh, pod instead of. The one that was that is being restarted, right? Correct. Wrong node. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's why session affinity is the solution here. I don't think that Mirage is complaining about waiting whatever seconds for the others to start up. I think that's you adding that other constraint. He's complaining about there is an inconsistent state here. Why, why am I seeing enable when I already enabled? Um, because it's hitting like a round robin and there is no session affinity. So I think we should implement session affinity here. And that is just how cloud works. I mean, that's not uncommon to have mesh pods be updated one after the other, whatever time it takes. Like, again, again imagining your, what I will try to show is that even if we handle what you want us to handle, it will not work like you're expecting and to still be in the first case. So what's the point of trying to fix something if we can't really fix it? Um, 
So, um, so you're saying that session affinity is a must in Orchard Core app if you're if you're scaling out. Yeah, like in the app, like probably. Yeah, may, maybe maybe we should make a documentation about. Yeah. Yeah, there, there is a lot, a ton of yeah, of guidance with how to set up in cloud environments, and it's not just about Orchard. But people who comes to Orchard, who come to Orchard, they might look at it first there, even though it's a global issue and we have the same solutions as in one. Um, that's why I just being like, how do you do session affinity on Kubernetes? Because it's not an Orchard feature; it's just a Kubernetes feature that the proxy should route you to the same instance if it's available. And if it's not available, then OK, let's go to another one. But in this case, even if it's restarting, it should still say that it's uh, the liveness or the healthiness, I don't know which one, should say, no, I'm I'm healthy, I'm restarting, I'm updating configuration, but keep the users on me. Or maybe it's wrong and maybe they will be redirected to another one. And then, and then this is why we see the this issue here. So I don't know if we can still st stick users to the one that is restarting, or if Kubernetes will always see that this one is not healthy and redirect you to another one. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, so what I wanted to say is that, let's say you have five points, okay, let's call it instances, and you, you, you restart one. So yeah, A, B, C, D, E. So and and we we the user always goes on A and we are restarting A and you want to restart everything at the same time. Imagine you have 1000 requests per second. That's kind of a lot. That's also not kind of a lot. Okay. Yeah, um, no, everybody has to wait. So but if we if we send a message bus, if we had the message bus like here, that's oh yes, we have a message bus, but we don't want to do it like live or real time or whatever. I mean, no, it's not real time, it's not live. How long does it take when you click the button and this process knows it has to restart? For the Redis, so you have Redis here, they all have a persistence connection to Redis and they are all warned about they have to, to reboot. How long does it take in milliseconds? Let's say you give me an answer which is one millisecond. Who knows how many requests have already reached B, C, D, and E during the millisecond when before I, I click the button, this is start restarting. So any, no, any other request is currently processed. And how many requests already reached B, C, D, and E? So they are already not up to date again. That's why I'm saying, you, well, earlier I said, okay, let's do something different. Let's not restart A until we communicate with everyone and everyone tells us, yes, we know we are waiting. And then when we know that everyone is waiting and not taking any other requests, then we can tell everyone, okay, let's now reboot everyone at the same time. And how long do you wait? You wait for everyone to be rebooted? What if one goes down? You wait indefinitely? Or maybe one minute because that's your time out, and then yeah, that, that's that's not resilient. You, so you, first, you can't ensure that everyone will restart at the same time. Second, even if you find a way to do that, I mean, there is so much risk that so many risks that you do not have a functional system after that because you don't know if E will go up in time or maybe it will be too slow. Why A should have been able to answer all the traffic. Yeah, so that's why today we just do the simplest thing, which is we start A, and when B knows it has to restart, it will restart. When C knows it has to restart, it will restart. But we don't want to synchronize them because it's too hard to synchronize them. No, that makes sense. But I just think you know we just probably need to put part of the documentation, um, you okay. know, because obviously whoever uses this needs to be aware of this, right? So that yeah, way, if I they're guess. running to this issue, oh, go we back to documentation them, yeah. and read. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. So I, I think, uh, you know, hopefully uh, Neeraj can put a documentation on how to set up Orchard Core in Kubernetes environment. Yeah. And he said as, he was. So and then, 
as we usually do, like use the issue to tell them, okay, now we know the answer, please send a PR to document that. So people don't have the same issue. Okay. Yep. Yeah, because like even if you're using app services, by default, they enable affinity by default. Yeah. They are, are. But yeah, there's just, there's a warning right there that tells you it's not recommended to use it. What? So yeah, it, well yeah, there is a if you if you go uh, because it's not recommended because you know you could potentially uh, in you know inflate the traffic on specific node and not the others. Uh, let me actually log into my Azure and, and get that warning. Uh, you go around one second. Yes, yeah, so the AR cookies from I think it's called application request routing. No, 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 no. Router. This is the name of the service that provides that. It was a feature of IIS that is the base of um, app service until one or two years ago when they switched to Kestrel and everything. So the front end is not using. Oh, is it the front end? Yeah, it's not using IIS anymore. Uh, and that's the cookie they assign. And when the, the the proxy finds this cookie, it knows which instance you are using, so it will redirect you to the same instance. Yeah. And so what it shows right there, I just opened it. It say improve performance of your stateless app by turning affinity cookie off. Stateful apps should be kept. Yeah. This settings on the stateful, uh, yeah. on stateful for apps. Build. Exactly. Stateful apps. In this case, our settings in this case can be supposed to be stateful, so we want it to be turned on in one session of routine. If it's stateless, it means like, oh, any server can can answer any request at any time. But in our case, because of those, these restarts, we can't. No, that, that, that makes perfect sense to me. I appreciate you explaining it. I think we just need yeah. to document it and tell Neeridge, you know, implement that on your Kubernetes and and you will be a happy camper. Awesome. Another way is like we could like uh, uh, we could have it like disabled by default, and when you hit a button that will restart the tenant, we could respond with a cookie such that the next request will stick on this machine until it works, and then we can remove the cookie, and then we are like, okay, you 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 can go on another machine if you want now because we restarted this one. You won't see another one until it's restarted. That yeah, I don't know how long the the affinity cookie is, is stays alive for. Oh I no, mean, I mean, it, it will stay alive for a session, which is fine. So if you close your Chrome instance, you will get a new server. So that's okay. But what I'm saying is that as long as you stay on the, on the same session, we'll send it and then we'll move it. So it's a session cookie. So if you if we start a new tab, no, not a new tab, but a new Chrome instance, then you will get a new. Yeah, one. get a new one. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. No, I mean it, I think it's safe to keep you using the affinity. Like I said, it just we need to explain it. That's all. Okay, awesome. Because I fell into that trap before when I scaled my app. You scaled. And I logged an issue, oh, and then scary. I had that issue, and and then I had to you know, turn back the ARR uh, cookie for it to work. Because there's no documentation whatsoever that tells you, hey, you have to have it unless you start digging and understand what's happening behind the scene. There's no way you can tell. And also what's interesting is that, yeah, so if one goes down, you could always have one go up just to, to balance the, the fact that one pod went down, so you're creating a new one. At the same time, if it's down, if, if it's a restart because of a setting, it's restarting, so there is no reason for Kubernetes to create a new one. So that's why it's interesting, maybe when we restart, that Kubernetes thinks that, or doesn't think that we are down, so it doesn't create a new one, we are currently Updating it, it's not like it's down, so that's really interesting. I will take it as a note.
So there is notion of live, live, liness and healthiness. There are two things. I never know which one is which. Um, okay. Well, good discussion. Thank you. Scale, 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 Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank Thanks, you. Mike. I'll see you for next week. Work. Thank Thanks you very much. Also for Bootstrap. You're welcome. Um, see you next Thank week. You. See, you in, see you in Thursday for most of you. <laughs> Not Mike. Bye. All Cheers. right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.